Well, uh, our closing moment now on Sunrise Daily, uh, we're being joined by Chima Naji. He's, uh, well, a public affairs analyst and a lawyer. Dr. Naji, good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, this whole uh, face of uh, between us and the federal government, uh, well, is it any surprise that we are still on it? Not so much, <clears throat> because um, I have been an advocate of um, strategic thinkers in government. We don't have strategic thinkers in government. And that's why we even had this problem degenerate this way. We have more of doers than thinkers. And unfortunately, too, on the side of ASU, without prejudice to those who are actually there for the passion on the job and who were prepared for that job and who actually have cultivated their minds. Because if you have an uncultivated mind, you will have nothing to flourish in anybody. I don't know whether you're getting my drift. So such people, therefore, will behave like the pedestrian NLC members in an ordinary temperature and pressure, if you want to take it uh, to the level of uh, NTP, as they say. <clears throat> there is this uh, folk tale. The tortoise stole the yam tubes you know, <clears throat> belonging to his father-in-law. And the father-in-law, being a wicked man that will not brook any such misbehavior, tied tortoise on a stake and placed it in the public square. So those people who were going to the market in the morning, early in the morning, they saw that he's, ah, what did he? They said he stole his father's, uh, father-in-law's here. Yeah. They rebuked him profusely. When they were coming back, they still saw tortoise on the sticks. They said this tortoise's grand, uh, father-in-law must be a wicked man. The same mouth they used to chastise tortoise, they now used to chastise the father-in-law. Uh, so neither Asu no government can be praised in the circumstance. You know why? ASU lost a strategic opportunity. The fight for improvement of educational sector is good. It's the fight for every Nigerian who actually has any patriotic zeal because the future belongs to those who have passed through the educational meals, not just passing through the school, but who have grabbed something from it and will, in time, give back to society willy-nilly. Because if you are educated you very well, you can't keep it to yourself. Now, ASO has taken the fight from its own angle to contribute to this effort. Bring it to the table. As academics, we are supposed to have cerebral contents. OK? And that even people in the social sciences should, and legal minds in the faculties of law should be able to sit down and advise on some of the social factors that could be put in place to get the government to listen. Yes, there's been too much of vaunting that the president was a uh, one-time academic and all that. That is not the issue because the view of the road changes when you move from the passenger seat to the driver's seat. So that's while, what we experience. While the driver will see the masquerade a kilometer away, the passenger will only see it perhaps some meters. But the, 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 the driver will not say, ah, look at masquerade. He'll just have a view and navigate through. But this other passenger would like to see the details of the masquerade. That makes the difference. What kind of social factors are you talking about when you say some social factors should be put in place? Good. Strike is a. Um, the last resort. And it, is, um, it lies within the domain of query money of those people who are less developed. When I say less developed, in terms of cerebral content, it is possible that Nupeng, with apologies to those who are you know, cerebral in that place, but the masses would always want to do what children are used to doing, crying when they are hungry to uh, you know, attract attention. But you as a father who have just lost your job, whose duty it is to provide biscuits to your children, you don't cry before them. You think on how best to make sure that biscuit does not lack on the dining table. 
in spite of the challenging situation you find yourself. So, ASU people, because of the unique position they have in the society and the expectation that they are people by individuals who have paid high price to acquire academic laurels. That is the expectation, even though it is not usually so now in many you know, uh, uh, situations. Because we have found people who have infiltrated that uh, association who are not good enough. They are neither good in the classroom nor good in their conduct. Because let me tell you the honest truth. Learning, which is the basis of uh, these academics and so on, learning, they say, is a process. Okay? It is a relatively permanent change in behavioral tendencies brought about by reinforced practice. When you store it by whatever means as part of you, it password, you, they say you have knowledge. That knowledge is not measured by the quantity of it in you. It is the output. How has it affected you? I don't know you are a doctor. If you are not able to inject and the patient is seen the next week. Mm. Mm. I don't know what I, so if you are a professor, you have been bringing lecturers on this set. You have been able to assess some of them. Some of them are not good enough. That is the simple truth. But you cannot judge whether they are in the majority or in the minority. But the danger comes if you have such minority in leadership position, because some of them may now want to fill the gap. The real academic may be too involved in research which is not so much going on now. If you provide the budget for research, the money will be there till the end of the year because some people may not come for it because that's the point you will be expected to justify what you are going to use the money for. How can we be talking about Boko Haram? There is no study from any university, from any academic, about the social factors that may have given rise or that may sustain beyond what the textbooks have been teaching us. Some lecturers still use notebooks they used in an undergraduate level to teach their students in 2013. Mm. You, you it's know, not good. The, so the, the, the challenge now is that government must do everything possible to get this thing sorted out. And then the academics themselves should also do some soul searching. Okay? Do some house cleaning. The universities are talking about infrastructure. When the money is released now, some vice chancellors have converted themselves into contract uh, awarding machines. And they have built fiefdoms in their area, you know, chiefdoms in those areas. <clears throat> mm. And contracts are not measured by performance, but the quantum of money. Mm. Civil, civil engineering departments, electrical, and all the necessary uh, departments that could make input in the infrastructural development in, are not challenged. Mm. Then you bring consultants from outside. Why you have a retinue of professors? You understand? Are we now trying to... Because I know there are some universities that have a preponderance of political professors in which you have like the Peter Principle. You promote somebody to his level of incompetence. And that is why some of them cannot profess anything except query money when they come on television or they, they advise political parties on how to commit uh, breaches of the law. So this is not what we should be doing. The academics have their own problem. The government also has its own problem. It is bad enough to vaunt openly that the president of the Federal Republic cannot be trusted. I think that should. That is a problem. It's a very big problem. And the presidency must not take this line low, not by way of trying to work against anybody, but do some soul searching. That credibility is very important. Government all over the world is a Leviathan. You can't challenge it. Okay. But the government must exercise power with humility and cerebral content. Mm. 